Hello, hello. Hi. Hey. How are you? Good. How are you, Samiko? Good. Nice to see you. Yes, nice to see you. It's been a while. I don't know if you remember we uh, met in Phoenix. I remember. Yeah. <laughs> nice haircut. <laughs> I know. A lot has a lot has changed uh, makeover wise for me for since sure. then. So <laughs> I like it. Well, Good. appreciate it. Appreciate it. So yeah, thanks for joining me here and getting to chat before the fight coming up. I mean, first of all, though, I mean, how has the summer been for you? I mean, I know you have your daughter, so I'm sure you get to do a lot of fun things with her uh, during, you know, the, these kind of seasons, right? Oh, yeah. No, it was great. She's um, she's becoming a teenager, so I have to take advantage of as much time as I can with her. But we did go to California, and I got to, you know, go train up there. But we, we made a trip of it, and so it was a great time. Yeah, I can imagine. Very cool. And real quick, Samiko, you're sideways for me. I don't know <laughs> what's going oh, on there. But... <laughs> uh, wait. Perfect. All right. And so, yeah, I mean, like since we last caught up to uh, you got to fight at home in Hawaii, which is super awesome. You know, of course, another great win. I mean, just what was kind of that whole experience like? I'm sure it was a lot to take in. <laughs> Yeah. No, it was super surreal being able to fight in front of my home crowd and getting the finish that I did, you know, so um, a lot of emotions, but I was just grateful to be there. And, you know, it was a huge event for Bellator to come back after everything that's happened with COVID. So I think the MMA community of Hawaii was just grateful to have that experience as well. So it was awesome to show for for my, my friends and family and all my fans as well. Yeah, absolutely. You can't beat that energy. You know, it's just kind of a different vibe that the Hawaii fans kind of get to bring. And I mean, was it kind of pressure? Have I know you fought, you know, some of your amateur fights there already. So I'm sure that wasn't a huge difference. Or I mean, maybe it was pressure wise for a professional fight and Bellator. Like, was there much of a difference in that regard? You know, I, I tried not to do that to myself. I think that just psychs me out mentally. So I just, you know, took it as another fight the whole time it was so weird i'm like oh my gosh i'm only an island away like i'm <laughs> home i'm still home and i'm not very far you know to everybody else it's far away so it was it, it was a different experience in that sense but um i got to bring my daughter along and you know I, I i just tried to enjoy it and just soak it all in and and not give myself that pressure and i think that it showed in my performance that you know just went out there, tried to be cool, calm, and collected, and, and that finish came, which was amazing. Yeah, absolutely. And are you somebody who's like a traveler who enjoys kind of traveling to a lot of places? Because I imagine this, having never been to Hawaii myself and, you know, living there, I would feel like I'm always kind of, you know, in a paradise and like, do I ever need to really <laughs> leave, you know? So like, are you somebody who likes to go around and see new places very much? No. Yeah, I do. I love it. You know, I think that being able to travel, just see different perspectives. It's it's able to give me just a sense of more gratitude for my home. You know, I come back home and I'm like, oh my God, this is my home. Um, but no, I do. I love to travel and see, you know, the world and meet new people and experience new things. And then come back home, like you said, and be like, okay, yeah, this is definitely paradise. So. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Can't beat that. And do you have a specific spot maybe that, you let's say for fighting that you'd love to fight there and then maybe just a spot you'd like to go just you know see it in vacation a little bit oh my goodness i would love to fight in japan one day okay my fiance got to fight in tokyo and it was amazing i got to go and experience that with him and and i would love to fight there one day um and then to visit my dream of I don't know if I'm every woman, but Europe, you know, I would love to yes. go and visit and travel Europe and just explore. It looks amazing. I mean, food wise, culture, you know, it looks amazing. Yeah, so, so many possibilities. So, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I mean, hey, the Japan one, very realistic, though, you know, with the rise in partnership. So fingers crossed, maybe you can get in on that. Uh, who knows when the time can arrive? Yes. But <laughs> very I know. Cool. It's so exciting. Yeah. So yes. many opportunities. Yeah. <laughs> And, you know, Sumiko, when we first, uh, you know, chatted in Arizona, didn't really get time, but I always like to kind of hear the backstories on how fighters got into MMA in the first place. So for you, like, how did, you know, we get down this path? Where did it all start for you exactly? You know, it, honestly, I got into it just for fitness. Like it was, a, uh, I was getting a relationship, getting that relationship body. And I was like, okay, you know, it's time to find something that I can put my passion into. And I ended up at a boxing gym. 
And that boxing gym was decided that they were going to throw MMA promotion on Island. And that was huge for us here. So, you know, they asked me if I wanted to fight, I won that fight and it just kind of snowball effect from there. I fell in love and I'm here today. So, you know, I think I'm going on 10 years. My first amateur fight, I believe was 2012. So it's, it's been a, it's been a while and, and I can't be more than grateful to be here now as four and as a pro it's, it's still hard to grasp sometimes, but I I'm, I'm loving the journey. Well, yeah, I was going to say like, do you ever kind of sit back and look on kind of how it's all unfolding? Like, man, 10 years, like that's, that's a great milestone, you know? Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And you know, when I think about it, just being from where I am, it's a little Island in the Pacific of the, in, in the Pacific ocean. And to have these opportunities, it's like, not everybody has those resources and I'm just grateful that I am able to have these opportunities and take them and, and put myself on this platform and just show, you know, anybody coming up from here, or, you know, that you can do it, just dream big and work hard. And it, it, it happens. It can happen. Yes, for sure. And were you into any like other sports before finding MMA that, you know, <laughs> kind of kept you busy at all? <laughs> yeah. I mean, in high school I did softball, but, okay. um, Honestly, like growing up, so from five to 15, I danced hula, which is, I mean, it's an art in itself. It's, yeah. you know, I, I don't know how all well that would translate to martial <laughs> arts, but um, it, you know, it was definitely a discipline. And I think that that it had, did instill me with um, some things that has translated to who I am as a martial arts athlete today. Yeah. Definitely. And so, I mean, that's kind of an interesting thing to me, kind of looking at the story of how we did get here, Sumiko, because I want to know like where you would say your intensity comes from, because you're very intense <laughs> as a fighter in there, you know, the celebrations, you get very primal, you know, and of course, after the great wins, hard not to be, I imagine. But is that just like just comes out of you or do you think there's i don't know where does it come from <laughs> honestly i think the, the switch just flips like when i get in the cage because this is this is how i am you know i i like to smile i if you see me yeah, you're very happy most person. of the time I'm, I'm smiling you know so i think it just the uh, lady samurai comes out yes. in the cage and that just and you know that i love that i love that i'm able to flip the switch and it comes out but um, yeah, I don't know. I can trace that back to, I have a lot of martial arts in my family and, um, I like to think that that just is in my blood and it's just who I am and it comes out when it needs to. <laughs> yes, it definitely yeah. does. <laughs> so what do you think you'd be doing if you didn't have MMA as a career then? You know, I went to school originally to be a nurse and, and I've always wanted to, that's just, something that I had in me that I wanted to give back to my community and, you know, help people. And I think that still with, you know, the choices that I've had for today, I can still do that. You know, I, I, I think that in the end, when everything's said and done, I hope that I'm able to help, you know, even the younger generation come up with, you know, martial arts and confidence and, and somehow give back as well. So um, yeah, nursing was actually the first choice, uh, but it went, total other direction <laughs> yeah a little bit <laughs> a little bit <laughs> but that's that's a nice fun contrast for sure and <laughs> like so much success so far in the career sumiko you know only one official loss right between the amateur and professional um you know run that you're on and you know a lot of people always say that you learn more from the losses and you know you haven't experienced that you know beside that one time so i'm curious like when it did happen what was kind of you know the mental process and rebounding like learning for you from, uh, you know, that one, you know, setback. Yeah, no, you know, it was great. It was, um, really, a uh, mind opening experience. Like, Hey, you have to be a well-rounded fighter. Like you can't just think, okay, you can be a boxer and take an MMA fight, which was exactly what I needed. If I was going to take this career as an MMA fighter, say, okay, I got beat on the ground. And that's, you know, I was just a little clueless there at the point. And, and that's okay. That's what your amateur career is for. So I just took it in that way of just learning from it and being able to build on my skill set. And then I'm here today. So I, I, I'm, I'm very grateful for that loss, very much so. 
Yeah, that was the one and done. Got it out of the way. Can just keep going. <laughs> Win all the rest <laughs> until the wheels fall off. <laughs> so, For sure. <laughs> but it's interesting, though, with uh, this one coming up here, Sumiko, because it's a rematch from, you know, one of your, what, your second to last amateur win, I believe it was, uh, against Mandiao here. So, like, is that kind of... I don't know how you feel about that because, of course, you beat her the first time. And so it's the first rematch that you're having. Like, I'm sure there's a lot of comfortability for you since you already know you can beat her. But, like, I don't know how you look at it this time. Sure, of course, you're expecting her to make improvements in, from the first fight and all that. But just, uh, yeah. Yeah, 100%. You know, she's she's been fighting a lot. I, I follow her career ever since we fought. And um, she's had a lot more experience. She's fought in a bunch of different promotions. And... And, you know, I give her props for taking on this and, and, and wanting to test herself. It's been four years for both of us to, you know, improve our skills, improve our mindset, improve on just being a human being. So I think uh, October 1st, we get to see who's improved more. <laughs> yes, exactly. And it's interesting too, Sumiko, because like, you know, following just around kind of online and what people, the Bellator fans say and, are, you know, watching your career as it's only continuing to get better and better. Like, seems people are kind of ready to see you kind of take a step up, quote unquote, whatever, you know, however they feel that is. So, like, you know, maybe a top 10 opponent or whatnot. I don't know. Are you feeling like you're ready for that, especially with a win here? Like, how quickly are you kind of hoping to, you know, take a decent leap or something like that? Yeah, 100 percent. You know, um, I'm confident with my preparation and we've been preparing for this. This is this is how it goes, with, you know my path toward where I want to be, which is to fight for the belt one day, you know? So uh, me and my team, we know that that's going to come and we're preparing ourselves slowly. But, you know, Bellator, they've been so good to me so far. Um, I, I know they're setting me up for success as well and they're giving me all these opportunities. So all I can do is keep getting these wins and I, and I think that that's going to come very, very soon. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, especially if you keep winning the way you are, just finishing everybody. It doesn't matter how, whether it's on the ground or with the strikes. <laughs> But, like, oh. do you have a preference when it comes to, you know, favorite types of finishes, Samika? Is a submission more satisfying for you, a uh, knockout, TKO? What, what do you kind of – do you have a preference? <laughs> Honestly, I don't, you know. Um, I think they surprise me every time. It's just, like, my preparation puts me in a place where these are even possible. So I just go in there, I fight my fight, and um, I think they come. And, you know, my last fight being – that knockout was incredible and you know i i don't ever want to chase the finish mm. that's that's something that i i totally have you know put myself in a place where i know that 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 things could go wrong when that happens you know so i just i i like to feel confident in my preparation and i think with that comes these great finishes yeah you never want to kind of overdo it and then put yourself in a bad position like you're saying right let it play out naturally and uh it's working out so yeah <laughs> is there was there a fight of yours you know that you would say has been the toughest maybe toughest opponent or that kind of situation because in the wins obviously you make them i don't want to say easy i know they're never easy but you know your performances have all been very good so like is one stand out though is maybe the toughest you've had so far um i mean you know they're all tough in their own ways the preparation leading up to the fight it's they're always different and there's behind the scenes you know that people don't see there's the toughness even though the the win comes you know the finish comes um you know i i i'd say maybe my second fight was you know the toughest just being able to push through and it, i got i think i got the finish in the third round which you know i i love i love the more experience i get in the bellator cage it just makes me become a more comfortable and confident fighter so you know, it's hard. I take every every fight with some kind of, you know, positive aspect of it. So it's hard to say. Um, you know, a couple of my amateur fights were 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 pretty tough yeah. for me. Just just because I wasn't a well as well of a rounded fighter as I am today. Um, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Definitely makes sense. And uh, you know, are you somebody who also is like, would you consider yourself a fan of MMA? Do you like to watch a lot of, you know, the Bellator events? And of course, I'm sure your division keep up with all that's going on. 
Oh, 100 percent. I I love watching fights. I'm a, I'm a total <laughs> geek with that. No, it ups my fighter IQ, and you know I get to see where people make mistakes. I get to see where people thrive, and I I take some of that with me as well. And no, I am I'm a total. I love it. Every weekend, I'm trying to find who has fights going. Even you know in uh, jujitsu in wrestling, I I try and take it. I'm an MMA fighter. I got to yeah. take it all from everywhere. Boxing, yeah. Yeah, and we just had the ADCC, so that was uh, some good. Oh, fun stuff that there. was amazing! Crazy. It was hard. It was like there was the fights, there was the ADCC. Yeah, everything and was, was happening. Boxing. It was everything <laughs> at one time. I had my phone, my TV, my <laughs> all my the laptop. screens. I had everything going. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that's awesome! So, with all that in mind, then Sumiko, I got to put you on the spot because we just got the title fight rematch announced with uh, Velasquez and Karamush now. So, I got to know. Prediction, what do you think is going to happen in that one? And I want to know, what did you think of the ending of the first fight? Because that was obviously controversial for a lot of people. Bad position Velasquez was in, but I don't know. How did you feel about uh, that whole thing? And then what do you expect in the second time around? Yeah, yeah. it was controversial. So I, You know, I could see where they stopped it. It goes both ways. You see a lot of fights that happen like that. It's it's so hard. It's all, You know, it's on the referee's discretion. It, it is what it is. Um I think it's going to be tough, this next one. I mean, they're both great, amazing fighters. They both have their own strengths. And, um, man, I don't know. They're <laughs> going to come for the fight. You know, just the way that that fight had ended, you know, I think the last one was going to go with that just that fire like i can't, that can't ever happen again and you know i'm just gonna be like oh hell no you ain't taking this from me so it's gonna be fireworks i, I can't i can't you uh <laughs> it's gonna be a great one for sure and I, yeah i think that's a very good point you mentioned about kind of how it played out, especially for Velasquez, who, you know, she even appealed the loss and all that. So she wants the belt back and Carmouche, of course, finally getting it. So she doesn't want to let it go. Going to be very exciting. Going to be very fun. But so is your fight and all your fights, Sumiko. So I cannot wait to see this one coming up here. And I wish you all the best of luck. I will uh, leave it off there for you. We'll let you get on with the rest of your day. I appreciate you so, so much. And uh, yeah, it is always great to catch up with you and, you know, hope you enjoy. The rest of Fight Camp, what I'm sure you're going to be flying out here soon. Is it's next week, so uh, safe travels and all that. And uh, just thanks so much, Sumiko. <laughs> oh no, thank you so much. I I always appreciate your time. You're you're so awesome. Thank you so much. It was I a try. great interview. <laughs> all right, Sumiko, take care. Uh, have a great day. Yes, you too.